Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all? In this Red Gaming Center.com video, we're going to be talking more about Pascal. Because I've been doing a lot more research on it, I've been mulling over my thoughts, and I didn't get to cover some stuff in the previous video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about asynchronous compute, which NVIDIA are touting to be much improved for Pascal, and we'll go into that in just a moment. We're going to talk about the new screen capturing software that NVIDIA are pioneering, and just some thoughts and opinions I've got of the graphics card as a whole. And also, we're going to have a quick look at Doom running on the Vulkan API, and holy fuck, excuse the language, it looks kind of good. I don't know why the hell I use that tone, I have no idea. Anywho, let's get into this, shall we? We're going to start out with the asynchronous compute things first. I'm going to briefly touch on what asynchronous compute is, because we've gone over it a lot of times in the channel. If you want more information, you can just search Red Gaming Tech Asynchronous Compute, and there are quite a few videos where we've actually explained in depth how the technology functions and what it does. But for the purposes of this, let's say you, you want to put compute-based work into your graphics card pipeline, you want the GPU to, let's say, handle physics work, well, with asynchronous compute, what happens is that the GPU can intersplice that workload between graphics workload, so between the GPU drawing textures, so, or lighting, or whatever it's doing. Occasionally there are bubbles in the graphics pipeline, which is basically the GPU sitting idle, or parts of the GPU sitting idle. So asynchronous compute allows the graphics pipeline to be much better utilized by simply intersplicing a graphics work. Oh, sorry, a compute work. Let me be clear there. So, Maxwell did technically feature asynchronous compute, but it required context switching and preemption. Now, NVIDIA are touting that this has been drastically improved, and it's obvious from NVIDIA's own press um, release that they were trying to push this as a... Uh, by the way, we're back, guys, to AMD. In fact, it just simply says, new asynchronous compute advances, improve efficiency and gaming performance, and that was pretty much all she wrote. How this functions in reality, whether we're going to see large improvements over Maxwell, well, we can only wait and see. Um, I would always caution with claims like this to, you know, be optimistic, because... Don't get me wrong, I'd much prefer NVIDIA to be highly competitive in this because it just pushes AMD, right? But, as with all claims, you know, take with optimism, but also have some skepticism. I feel that's the best way to approach the internet in general. I would be remiss, however, if I didn't talk about Doom. Now, I don't necessarily want to dedicate a massive thing to Doom because Doom is Doom, but the main thing about it is, well, the fact Vulcan was running it. <clears throat> and in fact, they got almost up to 200 frames a second, which is absolutely crazy. Unfortunately, it was just a 1080p, but that's because of the video wall and video were using at their event. Supposedly, that's the reason it was being reported at that. But the very fact that we can start getting 140, 150 frames per second average is crazy, and it means that 1440p is going to get bitch slapped by the 1070, let alone the 1080. And theoretically speaking, a 1080 should be able to run 4K, probably touching mostly at 60 FPS. And God help you if you're running SLI 1080s, or even 1070s for that matter. Um, I'd also like to point out that this has not been fully optimized. And the Vulkan API support is still being optimized as well. So that gives you an idea. And it also, for me, is a cool story because of the... A cool story, bro. Because of Vulkan. And I've been singing the praises of Vulkan for some time. It is, of course, a low-level API. Much like the DirectX 12, which is much touted. The difference is Vulkan, as you probably are aware can run across multiple different ecosystems. For example, it could run on Linux, it can run on SteamOS, which, yes, I'm aware of is a branch of Linux. Run on Windows, different versions of Windows, for example, Windows 7 or 8, if you so desire, and that's a good thing. Anyway, 
I want to touch on probably one of the last points of the video, and that is the new capture software. Ansel is one of those extras that is definitely going to be very, very, very fucking cool. So Ansel basically takes the notion of being able to print screen or, you know, using the old fraps it, um, image capture. It basically says, yeah, that's not needed anymore. With Ansel, you can basically have a free roaming camera in game. Now, it's important to remember that not all games are going to support this. They have to be supported in engine, and that means that if you go for something like, let's say, Bulletstorm, or you try to do this with Quake 1 or something like that, it won't work. So, certain games, for example, the Crisises, or um, I'm sorry, the Witches of the World will work. Um, and there are, of course, going to be other titles like, for example, Paragon, No Man's Sky, The Division. Those games will support this. But what you can start doing is running crazy resolutions. Because you can capture at 32. I'm just going to reiterate that because perhaps you may be misheard. 32 times the resolution that you're running in natively. So, just for sake of argument... You're running at 1080p. You're capturing the image up to 32 times that. You're running at 4K. I think you get the idea. But still, that's absolutely friggin' insane. And the beauty of it is that you get to A, put various post-processing filters on, and B, and this is the really cool one, you get a native raw image. That means that you can take that sucker and put it into Photoshop. So, the best way that I can describe this for anyone who's familiar with photography is you're basically taking a high-end camera, for example, a Canon, and that's what you've got to work with in this game engine, which is freaking amazing because that means that you could create this really awesome artwork. And I think for folks who are animators, for folks who are artists, for folks who are maybe doing, like, their own f uh, machinima, it has a lot of potential. And I, I have a feeling this is going to make some really cool videos. So I'm all for this. And I think it's a really cool technology. And hopefully AMD will create a similar technology. Why? Because that's what I want in the industry. I don't want one company to have one thing and the other one not to have that thing because it's not good. As much as I praised, for example, Mantle back in the day, and I said that the performance was fantastic, I did say the problem is I really wish NVIDIA would either support it or it would become a standard in the industry, and luckily it did. We had DirectX 12. So hopefully, once again, um, AMD have an alternative technology which is as good. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed that little discussion. Um, we did talk a lot about the performance yesterday, of course, of these new graphics cards, and it, my thoughts haven't really changed. I mean, they're absolutely just crazy. I mean, come on now. It is just freaking bizarre. And I have been reading up that AMD have said, don't get too crazy um, with the 980, yeah, so the 1080 and the 1070, and what NVIDIA are promising, you know, don't celebrate too early because we're basically coming for you. Obviously, they're going to say that because that's what they're going to say, right? But at the same time, I wouldn't put it past them to also have a really good architecture. And once again, for the good of the industry, I think that's that's imperative. It's not necessarily that I think that even if AMD or NVIDIA was to operate in isolation, we wouldn't have good cards. Because I do believe the folks over at NVIDIA, I believe the folks over at AMD... I believe they would put out better cards, and I don't think that they would release a card, for example, make the 1070 at like $5,000, because who the fuck could afford it, right? Let's just be realistic here, because it would push too many people over to the PC. I'm sorry, to the consoles. But, at the same time, it just means that we get that level of innovation faster, because it means both companies can work on different technologies, and it helps to just make the ecosystem that much more vibrant, and that is really where I'm coming from. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the 1070, 1080. Are you going to buy one? Let me know. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.